Every hot rodder that's never had an MSD box failure, raise your hand. That's what I thought. Today we're gonna buck the MSD trend and try this digital HP ignition box from Pertronics. As you can see, it's got all the fancy gadgets that your average drag racer would need. And it's got a really cool feature that I'm gonna show you about at the end that's not even listed here. There's everything that comes in the box. You get a couple of manuals, one uh, installation manual and a programming manual, which scares me a little bit. Uh, the box, some connectors, and a couple wiring harnesses. Reading through the directions, I uh, just wanted to point out a few things to note. Um, they obviously unhook your battery, it's pretty common practice. Uh, they recommend a coil that's 0.32 ohms or less, and then they recommend their own coils, obviously. Um, you'll find that most coils don't have a primary resistance of 0.32 ohms or less. Though I have found other versions of this paperwork that say under three ohms. So take that for what it's worth. You make your own call on that. My coil is 0.7 ohms and I'm gonna run with it. Uh, because like I said, there's other paperwork that says under three ohms. So uh, real quick, I'll just show you what we're gonna use, the wires we're gonna use. We got a heavy red and black. That's for your power. Um, these two black wires here are your coil. Small red is your trigger wire for turning it on. Um, this white wire, it says to use that in a DuraSpark application, which is what we're putting it on, uh, on the back of this paper here. But um, for other reasons, I'm gonna use this violet and green and treat it like a magnetic pickup. So it also says right here, wires used for DuraSpark TFI and HEI. So you can do it either way. Uh, this car never had a DuraSpark, so I don't really have this white wire. Um, gray wire is your TAC wire, and your dark blue is your two-step trigger. I'm not going to use the burnout rev limiter, and I'm not going to use this, uh, this shift light output. So those are the wires we'll be using today. Real quick, I just wanted to show you, this is what they're saying for the DuraSpark, where you would use your existing coil wires, run them into the box, but this is for the magnetic trigger, and you do not use the white wire, but you use the green and purple wires instead. So that's the method we're going to go with. So we're cheating a little bit, because I've already got this Summit box that served well. I think it was made by Mallory, uh, but... It's done fine. Uh, it's already got this harness that goes to your old dirt, or the dirt spark plug and adapts over to, again, the violet and green wires. So, believe it or not, this plug plugs right into the new one, this harness goes. I've coiled up all the extra wires and put them in there. I'll zip tie those up. The blue wire's still loose. Everything else is kind of done, so it should be in a state where it'll start. Alright, so my failed attempt to start it the first time was because I did not come in and program it um, the way you do this. The cylinder, that stays constant once you set it. But for all the other stuff, including if you're running magnetic trigger or points or what you want your rev limiter or two-step or start retard, any of that stuff, you have to come in and put it in a different mode, zero through nine. And in the paperwork, it tells you what dial to set, and then you turn the key on to store the setting. So everything's pretty much wrapped up. The thing works. Um, I'm reasonably happy with it. So I promised at the end I would share a really cool feature that isn't mentioned on the box. So I want to show that to you real quick. So when I opened this thing up, I was a little disappointed in the way you had to set all the settings on it. Um, and the fact that 
you know, you've got this tiny little dial that's really hard to see as you get older. Uh, and you would basically have to test your rev limits every time you changed them just to make sure they were right, especially if your eyes are like mine. So I was a little disappointed, but then as I got reading through this programming paperwork, I came across this. Uh, in mode four, this rev limit verification is super cool little feature, and you can turn it on and configure it the way you want. But what this will do is when you start or when you turn the key on, it will display for a brief period of time what your rev limit is set to and what your uh, launch rev limit is set to. So that kind of solved my main gripe with this thing. So as long as it holds up, I am going to be a big proponent of this thing. So I'll show you real quick in the car what it does. when you. All right, so here's a demonstration of what I'm talking about. It should jump up to about 6,200 for just a second, and then it's going to fall back down to 3,500. So that's your high side and your low side. Pretty cool. Verifies that your settings are correct. So you're not guessing and you're not worrying and you're not making a mistake. So I would recommend this thing all day long. It's less than half the cost of its competitors, at least any that I know of. And we took it out uh, over the weekend and raced with it. Worked great, worked flawlessly. So heck yeah, I would recommend it. It's a good deal. Give it a shot. If, uh, if you found this helpful and useful, please like and subscribe. We appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot.